It may be the size of Manhattan, but Laskiti Island is anything but. You'll find it midway between Vancouver Island and the mainland. It is often buffeted by strong winds and by rough seas. Laskiti is not an easy island, but that is why people move here. 300 people live on Laskiti year-round. Three times that many spend their summers here. Many people grow their own food, catch their own fish. It's a way of living reminiscent of a different time. In the 1960s, Laskiti Island was the place to be, a getaway for draft dodgers, for dope growers, for people looking for the extraordinary. Part of what made this island unique was its location, close enough to Vancouver Island to be accessible, remote enough to be a kind of refuge. Thirty years later, and not much has changed. Roads remain unpaved, and there are few luxuries. Progress has literally been turned away at the shore. There is still no car ferry to Laskiti, and this passenger ferry runs only five days a week. What people can't carry, they must bring by barge. <laughs> there is no hydro on the island. Some power is provided by the natural elements. And the not-so-natural generator powers some appliances. What might seem an inconvenience to most is merely a challenge here. What I'm hoping to do is set up a, a power, pedal power, mm -hmm. so I can charge my own batteries. When the girls all had hamsters, that's what we kept thinking, because they treadmill. constantly go on the treadmill. So yeah. we thought, well, if uh, we could hook some kind of a charger up there, that hamster could run like a light in Sarah's room. Mm -hmm. Kathy Fisher has been content without hydro, content on Laskiti for 23 years. There's a whole faction of people who really do want hydro and car ferries and stuff. And for, and for me, I see that that's been the major difference with the other island. That's one of the reasons why I'm here, is I like the semi-isolation that it has here. Finding a way to make a living here is another matter. Kathy's husband, Lawrence. For the first few years in the island, I'd been spending my time doing whatever I could to make money, which was mostly handicrafts. I figured it all out when I made buttons, which were the simplest and silliest things of all that I made. Um, I made more money than I did making anything else. Buttons, boxes, souvenirs, handmade and homegrown. When we first New York, Italy, Japan, New York, Italy, Japan, uh, Hong Kong, that's where we've got our first openings. Wildwood Works has taken off. During the summer months, they hire as many as 10 people. But no one works full time at Wildwood. No one wants to lose sight of why they're living on the Skeedy. Because we're not here to work nine to five, five, six, seven, ten 10 days a week. Like I would much rather drink a cup of tea with Lawrence take the time off to do that than to know I'm going to get 40 extra dollars at the end of the week if I don't do that. I don't care. You, I can't buy that space. We don't do quality time here. <laughs> this is hard labor. <laughs> Gordon Jones, along with his brother Bruce, tell a different tale of life on Laskiti. No, it, it's, uh, we definitely um, do uh, work all the time. So what, so, and how much is all the time? Uh, nine o'clock in the morning till midnight usually. Um, there's just so many, there's so many unfinished projects. Projects like tending to the shellfish. The Jones brothers run innovative aquaculture. Theirs was the first private oyster and clam hatchery in the country. Probably next week. When I'm in Italy, I want you to run the stuff in the sorting machine. Uh, I thought you were going to leave me a few things to do. Restaurants in Canada and the United States buy their shellfish because they're grown in the waters off Laskiti. The smaller the animal, the more sensitive it is to changes in water quality, and, and it, you couldn't really run this operation very close to any uh, large city center. The Joneses feel the future and their fortunes lie in the science of cryopreservation. These tubes are filled with oyster larvae and suspended in liquid nitrogen. When the larvae thaws, it becomes live fish food, and it sells round the world. 
But an international business on Laskidi is a contradiction in terms. There is no road access to the oyster hatchery. The neighbors don't want one. The isolation is an inconvenience the Joneses are prepared to live with. The big advantage is that it's such a beautiful place yeah. that um, you couldn't think of a better place to live in the world. And uh, we're able to work here and, <laughs> and live here both. The people who live on Laskidi are protective of their island. They worry newcomers will change it. Kathy and Lawrence Fisher hope those who do come to stay will share the values they find here. What we have is an ideal. We walk around without ever locking our doors, leaving our keys to our vehicle in our vehicle. We can drop our pack beside the road and come back two days later and pick it up and come home. I think everybody should be able to live like that. We're, we're building a community, and that's, and that's what I find that, that our society needs more than anything, is a sense of community wherever you are. The CBC News, I'm Dale Drury on Laskidi Island.